Now this video will uh, be approximately 15 minutes in length and it is part two of a two-part series uh, showing how custom uh, programming using the C Sharp programming language and the Tecla Open API can be used to uh, perform common tasks, day-to-day -day tasks, uh, with much less time and expense than could be accomplished without uh, the application. The uh, previous application, or the previous video, um, quit uh, halfway through the, um, the program uh, generating the grid coordinates. Uh, it ran out of time. We have to keep the videos at uh, 15 minutes or less. And so um, I'll just carry on from there. And uh, the previous video um, really dealt with uh, harvesting uh, the data out of the PDF design drawings and putting it into a format that uh, Tecla can use. So I'll show you um, uh, just in review what that looked like. Uh, here is the um, the folder contents, and this is the uh, report that was uh, generated from the uh, program harvesting the data from the PDF. And um, what uh, the contents of this file look like are uh, this, basically just a, a columns and rows, very simple data. Um, the uh, the uh, program can review the uh, PDF document, capture the um, material name, and uh, then uh, locate the uh, grids above, below, left, and right, and uh, just copy that information into a file. And uh, in this case, uh, this uh, beam would be horizontal. It would be a vertical beam. Uh, extending from grid line A to C vertically along grid line 1. And uh, then there's this one, which is different. It's um, uh, a horizontal beam extending along uh, grid line A from grid line 1 to 2. And so that's basically all it is. But um, there's all this information for all of the um, uh, beams and, and that it captured from the uh, model. But um, no dimensions, and no dimensions are needed yet. All that we really need to know is the the grid above, uh, to the left, to the right, uh, above, below, left, and right. That's all we need to know. Uh, the next step will provide dimensions to that grid information. Uh, this is the uh, program that will actually capture the grid information. and um, But in this particular project, as is common, the, um, some, of the, some of the columns and beams are located offset from the grid line. And so we have the ability to uh, um, enter in uh, offsetting data uh, dimensions. So just to look at that from here, uh, grid line A, the columns and beams are offset 13 and a half inches down from grid line A. So I'll just quickly uh, enter that. It's grid line A, it's uh, minus 13 and a half. And uh, then at the opposite end of the uh, job is 13 and a half from grid line A. Same thing, the columns and beams are offset 13 and a half inches from grid line in. Okay, and then we go to the other side and uh, grid line on um, the columns and beams are centered 15 inches on a negative value from grid line 14. And then on the opposite side is uh, grid line 1, and it's 17, uh, mil 17 inches offset from grid line 1. Uh, 
And then we've got one more. Um, grid line 15 is offset 10 inches. The columns offset 10 inches. Okay, and I'll just make sure that that's uh, by inches, and then we'll um, we'll run the uh, video here, and uh, it will write the um, dimensions that are going to be used to position the the beams. It only takes a short while to do that, and then I'll show you the file. Here's the um, Report saying it's grid C dot txt. So the um, the the position of the grid lines has now been written to the uh, folder, and the information from the grid lines. So with these two, the uh, program will uh, write and uh, do its work, and it will create the columns and beams in the model. Actually, the um, the work done by the program that harvests the information from the PDF does most of the work. This one's fairly simple. All we're going to do is create beams, and uh, we do need to call it the elevation. Uh, that is a metric uh, dimension. Uh, well, it's we we were entering it in in a, a metric value, and uh, that's basically all that we need to do. I'll just run that. I'll just um, start the program, then move this um, the the uh, program out of the view so that you can see the beams being uh, created, and um, it won't take long. Uh, I'll uh, I'll be back when it's uh, done its work. Oh, the program is uh, done now, and I'll just there it's done. It's all done, and um, so there we we've, we've got our model, at least as far as the information from that drawing. I'll turn on the uh, PDF uh, reference model. And um, there are some beams missing, and I'll explain why. Um, these beams here weren't modeled in this area, uh, and that's because these uh, beams uh, extended beyond grid lines, 
and uh, they weren't on grid lines. So none of these were included. Uh, these um, Oh yeah, that case, this beam didn't extend to a grid line. I was wondering why it didn't get done. Same with this beam. It didn't extend all the way to the grid line. And this beam extends past the grid line. And so there's the program doesn't know what to do with it. And um, none of these were included. Uh, but they can be modeled separately. And that's because uh, they were uh, left. They were not in between a grid line in the PDF document. So that information wasn't included. And uh, what do we got here? This beam wasn't modeled because it extends beyond the grid line. Okay. Uh, looks like um, it did a fairly good job. Now, this is uh, like the other apps. This is a, a helpful app. It isn't... Um, uh, that much more significant if it is uh, even as significant as some of the other apps um, it doesn't you know Tecla already is fast at modeling columns and beams uh, it has all sorts of uh, tools just for for the ordinary user that doesn't take that long to do that the the actual work for detailing is um, way you know way beyond uh, just putting in columns and beams but this is very useful for estimating um, we use this to um, estimate um, our potential detailing work. It counts up the uh, beams and the columns very well, and then we can uh, do some auto connections, automated connections, and uh, then we, our, our costing works, uh, you know, calculated upon whole by part, and um, you know the potential number of drawings needed. And so it's very useful for that, and we can, um, you know. Uh, include this uh, model in a BIM model and send it to the customer along with um, uh, material files or EJE files, nesting files that are needed. So it's very useful for the customer too. And um, there's still even to do a, a material a takeoff, there's still more work to do than, than we can do uh, just with this. But this is a big help. And it's just another uh, tool that can be used to uh, reduce the cost of, of some of these uh, functions. Just going to check some things out here while we've got this PDF here, and um, just check this out. So this beam here, let me check like that. Okay, it's, it should be 12 by 58. It is it's 12 by 58? Um, so one. W14 by 211, okay, it is. What's this one? 1287, so it gets them right. It does a good job of that. And um, this one's 12 by 58. Okay. I think you, you'll check through it. It's pretty, pretty accurate that way. I have a minute and a half left to this video till it gets to be 15 minutes. So um, as we, uh, this the same operation, it's a little bit different, but we, we, we glean the information from the uh, PDF and then um, three programs are run. We glean the PDF information. We, uh, we don't need to glean the, the grid information again because once we get it once, it's good for everything. And uh, then we create the beams at the elevation uh, provided. Same with the columns. Um, the program uh, doesn't do X braces. It doesn't do deck edge angle. But uh, typically, uh, we would connect a model like this and then send the uh, material list and the BIM uh, model to the fabricator as uh, part of the um, um, anything that we can do to help them calculate their cost. So um, thank you for taking the time to uh, see. So, yeah, we modeled these in, and um, thank you for taking the time to um, uh, view the video. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please email me at info at techladeveloper.com. Please look at the uh, website for other videos. And uh, we're we're uh, we've got uh, two guys working on this pretty well full time. And uh, we're doing all that we can to uh, develop these sorts of apps.